Hey, today is August 6th. It's been like one year and 11 months since we first met and I bought this land. And I'm sitting with my builder, Hanley Morello. Why don't you say something about yourself? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, um, I hope everybody's doing okay. And uh, thank you for letting us have this moment. My name is Hanley Morello from American Home Buildings. And uh, indeed, we, um, we have been in this place for uh, quite a bit. Um, many challenges, many lovely stories, many, many things to share. And uh, we hope to, uh, to do a little ceremony today on this special day. Yeah, this is the actual completion, like the handover of, of uh, yeah. Oh, the key like, is. You had a final push, like four guys and three, day, three or four days to get all the final details done. And we're, holy cow, this is, wow, this is it, this is it. This is it. We're, uh, this is the last day. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be coming back just to check up on the place and maybe hear something here or there. But yeah. other than that, it's pretty much your place to live. Um, <laughs> and here are now, without further ado, here are your keys. Wow, look at this. Um, look at all these keys. Like, I come from a condo in Toronto with only one key, and I feel really important with all these keys. Now, <laughs> look at them all. And yet, these keys are very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the house is free. It's the keys you uh, you buy. All right, all right. Okay, cool, awesome. I'll put them in. I'll just them right here. Okay, so tell tell us about tell everybody about yourself. Like how many years you've been in business, and uh, what you, you know what your phone number is, and you know history of past projects and that kind of thing. Like how many houses have you built and that kind of stuff. Uh, we've done quite a bit. Uh, it all started about 20, 22 years ago. Uh, it didn't even start in Costa Rica. Uh, when I was 11, I did my first uh, concrete mix. I used to have a job after I went to school because I would like to always have a little money and just be working. And uh, Wait, that's child labor. <laughs> it is child labor, but I went labor. looking for it. So, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so okay. <laughs> I just like working since I was a kid and I always liked money and making money and having something to survive with. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad never said no, so yeah, I was able to do so. I thought you said you. I thought you were gonna say my mom and dad never gave me an allowance. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. and then I ended up uh, going to the states for mm -hmm. uh, for about twenty years, which is where I honed the craft even more. Uh, different codes, different kinds of building, different types of building, and learned a ton amount in there I built a couple of projects uh, renovated numerous projects uh, and, and that's where most of our experience came from now we came to Costa Rica and we just integrated what it's like to build in stick building what it's like in the States and Canada and we we brought that here not so much the stick building although it could be done but the codes, the regulations, and the kind of finishes that everybody's looking for, that we all think it's normal in the States and in Canada, and, and it's not so normal here. The construction process and the experience of like just knowing what a product is, it's what's not that common in Costa Rica, as much as it wouldn't be uh, in Belize or any other places. It's just not many people ask for different materials and when you come and you want to bring a complete new look to a house that's where you start new, using new materials so you have to import you have yeah, to do all yeah. of that so that's where a little bit of where we came from and where we got our our like niche we figured that this is what we're going to work on we're going to work on trying to bring like real dreams like really cool stuff stuff that makes your heart beat and the stuff that we all live for and to make it come true and to make it to make it nice and to make it good like yeah niche yeah this house was uh what i love about this house is that it has that haiku mm. like it yeah. has a meaning mm. it has a root it came from somewhere and and it's here in costa rica and it's yours yeah, yeah. and uh it is a really cool project it's uh there's a lot of wood there's a lot of metal and concrete which is exactly what the haiku <coughs> concepts are, other than it to be uh, living inside and outside. So can yeah. this be done in Costa Rica? Yes, it can be done. We yeah. did it, and uh, 
it's just not normal for anybody to see these houses and say, oh, a haiku house in Costa yeah. Rica. So it's a 16th century Japanese farmhouse in Costa Rica. Like, what? The, how did this get here? Yeah, exactly. like, you must have imported the whole thing, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like... a gong on the side and I got everything. It's, I got... I got uh, Japanese writing and per, it says per vita above the window in Japanese. Which so, is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Little extra details. Yeah. Oh, we got these hanging lamps. They're like hanging lanterns hanging around the, all around the whole deck. And, yeah. and they weren't supposed to be like that. That was actually just trying to figure out a problem. How were we going to put them up? Well, mm -hmm. if we can't hide what we need to hide, then we're going to completely expose everything. And then just, that's, we're making lamps out of wood. Yeah, I got these lamps. I got the raw lights at a garage sale mm -hmm. for $10. Yep. And I just gave them to you. And I said, Do, oh, put them somewhere. I thought they were going to go in the basement. But all right. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So, um... So I so it's been two years almost yeah two almost two years since I bought this property and uh, I'm in an HOA so we've got roads and we've got water and we ended up getting power halfway through so, so what's the first kind of steps that you look f that you kind of need before you accept a contract and start like agreeing to build a house I think you said water was the most important but what else is well I, I'm gonna try to keep it quick but mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if I can do it efficiently. Uh, there are three things that are the main things that you will, anybody that buys land in Costa Rica will need three things from your buyer and from your real estate guy. Those two people should, their best interest should be that you get those three letters. If you do so, you're, you're in the clear. The water letter, which means that the municipality or an ASADA or the ANA tells you that you can have water or you lot. The electricity letter, which is the same an electric company that tells you you can have electricity and the municipality would give you something that is the use of the land it's a piece of paper that tells you what you can and cannot do with the land and how high you can build and how much you can build those are the three main things that you should always have if you don't have any one of them but you have one or two it doesn't work it's just going to create more headaches and more work and if somebody tells you buy the land We'll get it later. It doesn't work that way. Then it just means that somebody else will have to spend a lot of time and money uh, going somewhere to get these things. It's not impossible to get. It's just it's that much harder. And in the building process here in Costa Rica, the permits take a long time. The, uh, the process of getting a paper takes a long time. And that's why those are important because it's all about time. And if you need to move into your house with your family by a certain time because you need to start school or something of the sort, that's when it becomes important so like everywhere else in the world paperwork is the most important thing but here sometimes they like to play it off like eh, you'll get it later and sometimes yes but mm -hmm. it is always better to have it at hand. It's, yeah. it's always better to have it sooner mm -hmm. rather than later especially if you haven't bought and paid the money for it it should be like a key point yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. so uh so I'm I'm near Tamarindo right now, and uh, you're kind of based in Liberia area, yeah. that kind of thing. So, what's the radius of how far you will go for a project? Like, uh, um, the, would you go anywhere? Or? I I would basically yeah. we would most likely stay within the Guanacaste area, all the way down to Punta Arenas and and Ubita and Osa. Uh, it just seems like the most action. Building wise, is happening in Guanacaste, San Jose area too, uh, but not exactly in San Jose, like Atenas is another mm -hmm. place that we've gone to. Um, but we would basically, if there is a project that moves us in the sense that it has a meaning to the person, it, it yeah, has yeah. feeling to it, yeah. that's basically what we're looking for. We, yes, we know everybody's got a dream home, but. Um, I like the story. I like yeah, your story. Yeah, because I bought these blueprints 20 years ago, yeah. and I've lived in 20 different places. Yeah, you see, that, that, so it, I, I, that's a dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I wanted a really specific place. Like, I'm kind of isolated, but I wanted a place without any graffiti and no barking dogs, and, that kind of, and I got it. So, <laughs> you yeah. got the dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, there was a stray dog, but he took off because we don't feed him anymore. We don't feed him anymore, <laughs> so he went elsewhere. Yeah. You got cows every now and then that oh, roam yeah, around. Yeah. Yeah, roaming cows, yes, and bacas they're called. Yeah, yes. but that's, I guess, just the whole pr part of the process of like what it's like living in Costa Rica. You may have a monkey yeah. every now and then yeah. that's howling at your back door. Yeah, I should get, uh, yeah, we should get them to, we should train them to do labor, you know. They should get, 
You know, get down from those trees. Use your opposable thumb and uh, help us out. We'll give oh you man, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. Let's so speaking of monkeys, let's talk about people for a second. Okay. Like, uh, uh, where do you get your? Uh, so when I've been here, I've seen like I've seen probably a dozen different people that you find. Where do you find your people? And uh, if someone wants to work for you, what kind of skills are you looking for in when you hire a person? Okay, now we've got subcontractors and the people that we hire full time with us. Subcontractors, we hire complete professionals, whether it be in pools, electric, or plumbing, and or roofing, or windows, whatever that may be. And every job is different. I don't need subs every time. But when I do, I try to get the best off the best. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to raw, raw personnel, uh, we first start in the smaller towns, and I have a crew. I have three crews. Uh, one of the crews is in one place and the other in the other and so on and so forth. So we have like four people within a crew mm -hmm. that I've gathered over the years uh, knowing through people and other stuff and then when we go to towns we try to hire local help. It's not always optimal because it is hard to find good help mm -hmm. uh, but labor and helpers we try to get people from the town that we're in i guess in a way to try to give back to the community and try to see if we can work with the community rather than just come in and leave mm -hmm. and that's mainly how we do it there is no vocational school or anything of the sort that you're going to find people here so you got to rely on other people and finding and interviewing tons and tons of people. Yeah. You put ads out like anybody else would, and then you just interview and try. Out of 20 people, you find one, and it's just, I think it's the same anywhere in the world, though. Uh, but here it's just a little bit harder because not everybody not only knows construction, but the kind of construction that we're doing, it's not mm -hmm. really that normal here. So mm -hmm. it takes, it's a long process of looking for people and then come and go it's yeah, a high turnover yeah. and then you keep the one that that's great okay so uh i sent a shipping container of a bunch of goodies to you i sent toilets like wiring pex tubing roofing materials like switches and all that kind of stuff but where do you get most of your other supplies that like metal beams and and all the stuff that goes inside concrete like do you get all that just uh, i source it locally yeah, yeah. uh the raw materials, concrete, metal, and and wood, you can find in just about every hardware store. And then you got the specialized stuff. And sometimes a lot of stuff in Costa Rica is specialized. Mm -hmm. uh, something as simple as a double pane window is specialized. Yeah. So then you have to source all of that in San Jose, in Heredia, Cartago, and, and, and like all throughout Costa Rica. So you find yourself going to get stuff all nationwide yeah, uh, yeah. because there isn't a Home Depot however there's a place called EPA Lagar EPA they they're the closest things to a Home Depot and they do help a lot yeah. problem is that they're really far and yes they deliver but sometimes you just need to touch it you need to measure it you need yeah. to see if it's gonna fit and there is a lot of that so you have to go there put it all in the truck and let's go okay yeah. Can you, um, so it's been a year and a bit it's working on this. Can you say some of the th things that went right with this place and what went wrong? Any s brief stories on mistakes that were made, and if any? any well, uh, like what went right? Like, what do you. Uh, it, a lot of things went wrong. Yeah. Uh, none of it your fault, none of it my fault. Uh, there were absolutely too many delays. Yeah. Power delays, electricity. Power delays and, and a water delay. A forest fire. There's literally a fire that could have taken the house. Yeah. Uh, it was a brush fire. <laughs> and, and we had people literally 48 hours uh, awake just wetting the grounds so yeah. nothing would happen to the house. Uh, yeah. And the things that yeah. went right, um, when you look at the tower that we built, that's right. Here's yeah. why it's right. Yeah. Because... Yeah. I don't think you'll find another one in Costa Rica. Yeah, nope. Not nope. one. It, it's basically a sightseeing tower, and mm -hmm. it also looks like a, like a, what was that, that Shrek movie with? Uh, 
Oh, it's like a oh, you're th- the are you princess of the of a, tower. You're thinking of Rapunzel, Rapunzel letting your hair down or something. <laughs> Let your hair down. It's like a Rapunzel like tower at the same time because he's got that that yeah. I don't know that Irish castle look yeah. with the stone and everything mm-hmm. and the doors. And, so it's 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 second to none. That's one of the right things. Also, the roof was a beautiful thing here. Uh, I think mm-hmm. that was one of the right things. Uh, a lot of that. Uh, the look of the house once it's finished, it's something that went right. Uh, okay. That's I'll, And that's what I want to focus on because a lot went wrong. Yeah. Uh-huh. And the right things that went right, uh, the basement. That's a gigantic basement. Yeah. And yeah. I thought we yeah. were going to have more problems with the water, but because we're so high in a mountain mm. and we prepare all the walls from the outside so much more, uh, that we don't have a Yeah, it seems nothing. pretty solid. It's, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Structural-wise, I knew it was going to be okay, but, um, you know, in the States and Canada, you're always worrying about is how is the water going to affect this and how is that going to affect this, but yeah. here we're high, we did it, it was perfectly done, and I love that. That was one of the right things. Yeah, we were here for an earthquake at once. Yeah, Remember yeah, that a, was interesting. An, an earthquake wasn't it? actually happened while we were here, and uh, we looked around, and there was no big cracks or anything like that. So it was actually, no cracks or nothing broken. It seems pretty solid. It was actually very interesting to yeah, to yeah. feel an earthquake you shake, a, and yeah. then we were sure that the house was built right because it didn't yeah. fall off. The tower didn't fall off. The stone didn't fall off. We used Bondex instead of stupid concrete. Like Bondex Actually, is we way used a, a high stronger Bondex. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a Bondex that is a normal one, and there's another one that is even stronger. Oh, okay. So it's like crazy strong. All right. Can you, okay. Can you tell briefly the stories about going to the municipality and getting the permits? Because I remember it took like eight or nine visits to them, and they were constantly asking for the paperwork again and again. Can you tell briefly, like, what just what happened what what do you think of those people <laughs> yeah that that goes back to the paperwork yeah and this is why it's so important because when you don't have paperwork and on top of that you you throw on top bureaucracy yeah it's a it's a recipe for a nightmare it just means that you're going to be there in and out so many times yeah. Every person is going to tell you something different. Even if you bring the paper, it yeah. may be expired. So you got to do it again. And this continues on and on and on until just all the stars align and, and you get your stuff ready. But it, it truly is. Uh, it could be a one-month process mm-hmm. or it could be a seven-month process to get your permit. So sometimes mm-hmm. you're going to start building your house even without the permit. Yeah. By the time you get the permit, you're almost done with the house. Yeah, and remember at the end where uh, <laughs> where I had to get certification because I'm doing yeah. this immigration visa. Yeah. I have to, I got to prove or show to immigration that I spent, you know, uh, that the house Excellent. is worth. Yeah, and uh, I had to go to get certified. Certified, and uh, it's, it normally takes like ten days or longer, and then. Uh, I got the whole thing done in two days, mostly because I showed up with a bunch of stress on my in my face, and, and I met one guy at the municipality who knows a little bit of enough English to help me out. He gave me his personal WhatsApp number and he showed me papers of what he wanted and all that. And I got I got the thing done in two days. And you said it would take like three weeks or something. For yeah, we went there and yeah. Um, yeah. and we asked, well, how long do we have to wait for this? And they said, well, it's going to be. One to two weeks. And yeah. I remember looking at you like, that's not going to be two weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah. And indeed it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, it, to this day, that wasn't done. I mean, you got it done completely outside the lines. Mm-hmm. And you got it done, which is the important part. But um, otherwise, we would have to have been waiting. Because it wasn't just waiting for them. Then the other person that had to do something had to wait for something. It's just the waiting game you, yeah. you definitely learned about patience in costa rica yeah and I remember that one guy who said he was going to do it in 10 days but then after 20 days we realized he didn't want to do it anymore yeah. so we had to start from scratch and that's where i kind of came in yeah. and got stressed out and took over a little bit right so um uh so i was okay so uh when i signed the contract i sent you a bunch of money and uh, uh, i sent it to i sent it from canada using a wire transfer directly to your costa rica bank account and it took me, I think it took about a day or two for me to do that, my part. But I also had to give uh, info about my 
like where the money came from and that my account was in good standing and all that stuff. But how long did it take you, on your side, how long did it take to get you, uh, to get that cash, the first payment? <laughs> Uh, that's actually one of we changed the whole way of working for yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, we did it for two way for two reasons. What we're doing is we're having a US account where people can deposit normally from anywhere. And it's it's a faster process, it's a much easier process. Everybody can understand the process. Yeah. Doing the same in Costa Rica took us about a month just for you to send all the paperwork because every day they ask for something different. Certifications and the accounts and pictures and everything from mm -hmm. your account and it made it that much longer. Now the secondary part is that even if you do get the paperwork to them, there's always somebody, you're at the mercy of that person, the branch manager oh, yeah. normally, yeah. Yeah. that says yes or no mm -hmm. to your transaction. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how much you you showed him he still has the last word uh, they say that they do this in order to stop uh, money laundering ma laundering but at the end of the day it's just a big hassle for everybody for the client mm -hmm. for 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 us because you want to push to get the house done we want to push so we can get the materials with the money that you sent and that's impossible to do sometimes it took us almost four months from the time that you sent the money to the time that it was approved to actually go into our account here in Costa Rica. So it was crazy. Now, if clients have their money here, obviously we can do transactions here in Costa Rica, but not many people think everybody that's here at one point or another is gonna have to go through something like that. Yeah. And that's why we came up with that thing that we, yeah. okay, let's just do it in the US. And then we we bring it over here because yeah. we have a, a more facility to do it. Yeah. So now you get, uh, now I just send money to your Wells Fargo account. Yeah, it's super easy, it's isn't it? Costs like one dollar, I think, yeah. using Wise or something. Yeah. It used to cost thirty dollars, but I found Wise dot com sends it for one dollar, and uh, yeah, well, you get it. You get an email and all that stuff. So you, you have another account, right? You got Bank of America mm -hmm. as well, right? So, Correct. Yeah. Okay. So it's easy. All right, just do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, What kind of things are difficult? So I sent a shipping container of toilets and all that stuff. But what kind of stuff is difficult to get here? Is there anything difficult that, or do you? I kind of notice you innovate. Like if you can't find something, you make it. Like we tried. Yeah. Like remember the stairs, the yeah. spiral staircase. Yeah. We looked everywhere for a stairs or a ladder. Couldn't find one, and then you surprised me by. What did you? Yeah. What did you do? Well, well that was. Um, it was good because the client doesn't always think about everything. In the set of plans, we had a ship's ladder. Yeah. Uh, now, if anybody's been in a ship, it's really hard to climb up and it's really hard to climb down. And we had the problem with space. We didn't have enough of it in order to put a regular set of steps. So what are we gonna do? So that's where we started, all right, let's do a spiral case. And then we started looking and then in the marketplace, there just wasn't one. Well. If you can find one, then you make it. And that's exactly what we did. And I think it came out okay. Did it come out okay? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's impressive. It actually impresses uh, some people, my, yep. my friends and family, when they see the pictures, they go, I just say, that thing was like hand built and all the parts were bent in shape and yeah. teak wood steps and yep. like, holy smokes. And the tower one, like that's even like, that's, that's even that's, bigger. The spiral staircase in there, it's like this one times two. Yeah. Like, holy smokes. No, it definitely is something that it's an eye catcher. It definitely looks nice. It has a je ne sais quoi mm -hmm. look to it that brings out like the feeling of the whole thing. It's like yes. oh, for outside, you're like, oh, it, yeah, it's like a cabin. It's not a cabin at all. But then you go inside, you're like, wait a minute, this is not a cabin. This is more like a, it's a almost like house. a luxury luxury style kind of place. It's like a Vina times two. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so um. All right, so it's been a year and like 10 months since we started and uh, we estimated maybe a year But normally like Based on, you know because of all the set uh, of all the delays and things yeah. normally are you pretty accurate with your estimates? I usually yeah. beat uh, yeah. My estimate and yeah. I usually put a month mm -hmm. to be safe mm -hmm. Why to clean up a little bit? There's mm -hmm. always a little detail here or there that you want to touch up but here 
there were so many factors working against us like not having power was one of the biggest ones we had sections of times where we were in three to four days without water and just when you're building with concrete it's just essential that and electricity are essential so uh, you you multiply that times every month having that kind of issue it adds up it starts adding up adding up otherwise we would have been done here in eight months had everything been perfectly right, but the world isn't perfect, and and the forest fire too. Yeah, and the forest the fire. fire, the cows, yeah. the uh, yeah, all right, okay, Christmas, all that stuff, holidays. Yeah. So, how do you keep your clients informed of your progress? Uh, what's the best way to in asking them questions? And I like sure. emails, yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's easier to keep the emails in once. But WhatsApp has been they go to an app that you can save pictures, you can send mm -hmm. pictures, you can send files, mm -hmm. large files, small files, videos, audios. Sometimes you just need a quick answer, so that's the best way to, to reach us. It's 8816-0514, uh, uh, that's our WhatsApp. And um, depending on where you are, you may have to put the 506 area code yeah. for the beginning. But other than that, that's, that's a really good app. Uh, phone calls, yes, but I don't know if you're in Florida or if you're in Canada, Calgary, somewhere. It, it's going to cost a lot for you to call me or vice versa. Yeah. What's up? You can make calls. They're not the best, but at least we can have a conversation about something. And then photos, videos, and all the stuff that you need in order to keep an, a client um, informed about what's going on. That's that's their best. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I remember we started with a Zoom call a long time ago, and then yeah. we went to switch to WhatsApp. And then you sent videos back and forth and pictures. It was great. Okay, it has been a, it's so useful, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, yeah, it, so, it's you. Yeah. I learned to use it more when I was in Costa Rica than ever anywhere else in the world. Yeah, and you could back up your, the entire conversation and all that. Yeah, That's so, right. Yeah, I like it. I like it pretty good. So um, here's a here's a question from one of my neighbors. He goes, uh, "Can you provide uh, some examples of where you went beyond client expectations, <laughs> like uh, where you uh, customer asked for something and then you kind of went nuts?" <laughs> <laughs> any any examples of that? Well, the the structurally is where I like to go above and beyond. Structurally, structurally, yeah, because yeah, oh, okay. uh, the footings here they're good footings. So people are used to built against earthquakes and all of that stuff but then uh, use what we normally use when we're building buildings in in the US that you do uh, a huge footing in order to support mm -hmm. a lot of weight mm -hmm. and in this case we did the same thing we did legs that were um, four feet by four cubic feet yeah. four by four by four by four okay. uh, filled with rebar and everything else is strong enough to support an ox and then it, it did that to support a light structure but that's not the point the point is that we wanted the whole house yeah. to be good that that was if not the main one has to be the main one because you don't want i don't care how cute the house is if it falls off there's nothing good about it yeah. uh the and stuff like the lights that you were talking about that was it, it was something that we made out of necessity because we couldn't figure out a way to put them up on the ceiling yeah. With, yeah. and hiding all the wires so we made these boxes and they came out with these beautiful lamps and it actually goes with the house. Yeah. That was way uh, for a ten dollar buy that you made. It cost us like a thousand to make it uh, look even nicer. Uh, sorry. But that, it, look at the end product. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Not only that, it gives such a nice warm sense to the house. Um, that's obviously the staircases. The, 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 inside the house they were yeah we could have done something super simple and get out of the way and but yeah. it's yeah. that's not what we're in for we really want to do stuff that it's a wow effect when people come and see it and that's that's what everybody wants yeah and uh speaking of what uh, yeah so speaking of what a class customer wants like uh, i wanted i gave you a very specific list like with this place i gave you blueprints and i gave you I gave you everything. With the tower, all I gave you was a floor plan and, and an outside picture. <laughs> and an and, outside picture. Yeah, that was. That, that's all I could do. That's all I had because the, the for the tower, I couldn't. The planes were not for sale. I couldn't buy them even if I wanted. That's my baby right there. Yeah, so that's yours. That's your guy. That's your tower. Yeah, really. the tower. It was just imagining 
what it would feel like inside. And mm. Mm. to be honest, when you're on the second floor, because it has three story people, uh, the first one you go in, you have a, um, a bathroom, you have a kitchen, the staircase, a uh, uh, staircase that it goes up, and um, it's spacey, a lot of space. But then you just go to the second one, and there's this beautiful chandelier at the top, but then you see. 360 degrees mm -hmm. of nothing but view. Yeah, that's an homage to my condo in Toronto. Eh. Like, yeah, I had a 38th floor penthouse suite in Toronto, and I could see the entire west side of Toronto. I had a corner unit. It was great. Well, here so, you get to see 360 yeah, yeah, yeah. degrees of everything. So, yeah, so how do you deal with uh, customers who change things halfway through, like um, like a change order and that kind of thing? That's, gonna, I, that's an evolving process, but lately what... What the process is, is we we stay on task, and then we do change orders, which is if you want something else, we do it at another time. Mm -hmm. And that's what's called a change order. And uh, But every now and then, or a lot of times, things will have to change on the fly. And that's when uh, you can do a change order. You, you just have to do it now because we're pouring. This cannot be done tomorrow. It has to be done today. Mm -hmm. Can you please do it? Can you add a light? Can you add a switch? Can you add a lamp? Can you add something? And usually then we go back and say, all right, well, roughly it's going to be this much. You want to do it? Yes or no? Because mm -hmm. the time is now and the time for you to give me an answer is, is immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how that works. But in, in the construction process, that happens a lot. Because mm -hmm. uh, you don't plan changes. Changes you feel and they come to you by seeing, by touching, by... Yeah. by being there like the stairs to the basement absolutely right yeah you you've uh, we discussed a while ago where how am i going to get down to the basement that's right we started with going well first you go outside and go down the windows no i'm not doing that uh we gotta where could we put the stairs so uh then we you, you we had to cut a hole for the stairs yeah, yeah. that was a complete change order yeah good sorry thing that you brought that up sorry about that <laughs> Yeah, right. But you gotta do it. It's a good result, though. All right. No, it's, it was an amazing result. Did you like them? I think yeah, they're, they're great. Not only are they functional, they came out very comfortable. Um, we don't. We had. We have an um, an immense amount of room, but where we needed to put them, we needed to figure out the height for you to not to your, hit your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was limited, but it it was good. Yeah. They're comfortable yeah. enough that you can go up and down. And uh, they're good. So how do you deal with customers? Here's a you know, how do you deal with customers that are want to like micromanage you and like really hands on? Uh, you know, well, hands uh, uh, hands on. I don't mind somebody who likes to be behind us and look for it. Yeah. What I cannot have for terms of safety is somebody who is in the house with the guys trying to tell them what to do. Uh, it's more of safety. Mm -hmm. I can't have you fall off a ledge. I can have you fall off on a rebar because of lack of experience everybody that works with us it's with this every day so they know all right there's a rebar there i'm not going to go fall on top of it um and i'm going to take steps against it and we try to keep everything clean and organized but it's still a working site and i don't know yeah. where the client's background is he may be a builder he may not be anything i don't know if he's used to it or not however that's why we do a contract. Everything that's in the contract will be done. Yeah. And probably more. Because mm -hmm. uh, I usually like to throw in a little more. But um, micromanaging, I don't think building a house is the place for it. No. Yeah. We can micromanage a lot yeah. of paperwork and yeah. a lot of different stuff that we can do yeah. in, in construction. Yeah, I can, t I can tell you what I want, but I can't tell you how to do it. Yeah, really. I mean, yes. So, and, and you some people might want to tell you how to do stuff. And it's fine. Yeah. But you could tell me how to do it. You could show me how is it that you want it done. I just can't have you there when I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. Because um, people are people. I don't. As much as safety for my guys as it is safety for the, pe for the client. Mm -hmm. um, you may not see. You may think it's cute that you that you um, kicked over a bucket of paint. Oh, I'm sorry. But that no. bucket of paint was $200. Yeah. Or sometimes people come in and break their water pipes. Yeah, I never I never kicked your paint over, but I did break a water pipe. I stepped <laughs> on a pipe and water was, uh, yeah, water was just gushing everywhere. and <laughs> Everybody got completely soaked. And this poor guy named Lucas had to fix it. So he was not really happy. 
But luckily I gave him like, I gave everybody like a thousand dollars worth of gifts before that, right? Yeah. So everybody had brand new shirts and boots yeah, and stuff. And stuff and, right? <laughs> Which so. I loved them. Um, but yeah, these are the kind of things that nobody can see. And yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. It could be nothing. It could be a lot. It could be a lot of somethings. And that's the problem why I can't have people. It's actually one of the contingencies yeah. in the contract. Uh, and I think it's a normal understanding that, you know, the client is paid for a house not to build it. Mm -hmm. and so yeah yeah I came here while you were finishing it but I had to do it because I had to do immigration stuff I had yeah. to get the house certified I had to uh, I had to do I had to work I had to get internet hooked up which it never happened <laughs> I had to get <laughs> oh, so much stuff I came here for uh, but I, I tried I, did, I tried to stay out of the way so, you did oh, tried uh, so uh, as a builder who, who's originally from the US like how do you compare yourself to Costa Rica builders? Compare um, to? Yeah, I would say... I wouldn't compare it. Yeah. I think there is no comparison because things that I've learned a long time ago are coming here as novelty. Something mm -hmm. that, it, that it's new and improved and it's the U.S. standard or the mm -hmm. Europe or Canadian standard. And uh, honestly... It's not that I'm better. It's that we have the niche that what we normally live with in the U.S. Decks, uh, have high ceilings or high windows and really cool stuff. They still may be luxurious in the States, but we've already done it. We've already seen it. We've already been there. And now uh, the beauty of it is being in Costa Rica, you just get to work with cooler materials when it yeah. comes to wood and raw materials. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just incorporate that into making a better product rather than rather than not. And um, in Costa Rica, the construction business has never been one where it's made to be expressed by somebody. It's always, hey, I'm a builder. Let me have some money so I can build your house. Mm -hmm. It's always a business transaction. Mm -hmm. I guess... I wouldn't compare it because of that reason. I try to make it, this is this is my life. This is my company, these are my people. I really want to build to show off, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your portfolio. It, it's my portfolio, but I want to I want to know that I, I went through this life and left something behind that was yeah, cool. It's your mark on the world. Yeah, it's that little it, thing on the world. Yeah, and last week you flew from here to Nosara and you can actually see this from here. That was actually absolutely cool. Yeah. The fact that you could see it from an airplane, that was super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Was super, super like, cool. Like, I do computer stuff for a living. I don't leave a mark on this world. It's all digital. Yeah, you. your, your mark is digital and it will be there. But yeah. uh, this place we all want to leave a mark somehow in this world. I guess yeah. we to make sure that everybody remembers that we were there at one point or another, at least for a couple of years. Yep, yep, yep. This will be, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the end of my questions. I think it did a great job. Uh, I'm pretty happy here. This is a not just a house, it's a home now. Yeah. So I have keys for this. Like, look at all these keys. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to, I think I, I always wanted a place that's big and I can do my work. I can do it in the tower. I can do it on the second level, on the roof. I can do it in a loft. I can do it from my bed. I just got to fill this thing now. It's, this house is massive. For one person, it's too big. <laughs> can't find anything five person for yeah. five people is too big but uh what did i said i could put 60 pinball machines downstairs <laughs> <You could. laughs> it definitely is the tower this and the basement they're really big places it's potential though right all it's that empty space is potential. It's so much but there's how many this could room. be if this could be so many things um this guy's the limit I can do a rollerblading park. I can have a helicopter landing pad you over there. Could. I can have those. You could do that now. Things. Just paint the H on it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I could. I can have a soccer field, bowling alley, lawn bowling, <laughs> lawn darts. So if any, <laughs> any any of you that are looking to buy a house in Costa Rica but need that helipad, here's yeah. your guy. We could probably do weddings on on the side, like wedding receptions. We could have what? Like, imagine the bride coming down that spiral staircase and, and getting from the tower. Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, or getting married on the roof and having a giant reception area. And we got to fix up the here. landscaping a little bit. But I yeah. tell you what, for weddings, yeah. that would absolutely. Who gets married in a tower? Rapunzel. That's about Rapunzel. That's Cinderella. about it. And she and didn't Cinderella. even make it there. 
the dragon like kicked her out or Shrek to kick her out. Yeah. Cinderella would do it. <laughs> but in any event, listen, I thank you for the time. Yeah. Um, appreciate this. I know you wanted a home and this is a home, but people's lives came together to get this done. Yeah. Yeah. Ideas and many problem fixing ideas came from this. And it now doesn't seem like it was so noisy as when we began. It now is a peaceful, absolutely piece of art that it's lovely. It, it truly, it, it came together in a beautiful way. Yeah. And um, you're a beautiful person and you're going to enjoy this. And I hope you can bring some family and some friends to enjoy it with you. Oh, um, yeah. I'll take care of it for you. Don't worry. I'll make it look good. <laughs> and, uh, it, it'll, it's, it's a beautiful place. New count of, a new a coating of varnish or whatever. Every, yeah, every when, is... once a year, a yeah. new coat of varnish. Okay. Uh, the especially wood will the last, side. The, especially, it's because of the yeah, sun. The sun, yeah. yeah. Especially but, the um, yeah. It, this <laughs> is going to be about four hours, and then after that it goes away. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is going to be a place that will last forever. That's for sure. All right. So it's, Unless somebody comes and breaks it. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. So uh, let's end with uh, saying, like, how do people contact you and uh, what's your availability and, and that kind of thing for a project? Correct. Yeah, uh, we don't like to take any more than three projects a year. Um, so we get filled up pretty quick. <coughs> but if you have a project that really has that feeling and, and you want to make it a reality, uh, we're, we're your guys. Uh, you can contact us at 8816. 0514. Uh, my personal email is helenmurillo at yahoo.com. Maybe put a link on the bottom. And uh, you can visit our page at www.americanstandardbuilders.com. And um, hope to hear from you. And yeah. please let us have a really, really cool project. That's what, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we're into. All right. that's, that's our niche. All right. Thank Thanks you.